In my last video, I was talking about job interviews in gameplay animation. And there's a moment in the video where I said that we, gameplay animators, are expected to show our animations implemented in game engines or in games. Now, if for some reason you don't have access to game engines yet, maybe you don't have enough experience to start playing around with them because you start in the, in the job, there's still a way to create what would be an in-game framing directly in your 3D software. So today I thought I would do a really simple and quick video on how to set this up in Motion Builder since this is the program I'm using every day, but I'm pretty convinced that you could be able to do the exact same thing using a similar systems of, of constraint in Maya or in Blender or whichever software you guys are using. I have Motion Builder already open. Let's switch the view, dig in and see how it goes. All right, so for this video, I thought I would be using a running loop since the translation forward is quite substantial. I think it would be easier for you to see the effect of having a camera following that character. Now, the first thing that probably comes to your mind when I said that the camera has to somehow follow the character is to uh, parent the camera to the character directly on into the hierarchy. We could do this, uh, but or you could use also a parent-child constraint uh, because in Motion Builder, there's no difference. The parent-child constraint mimics the fact that if you uh, parent an object B to an object A, it becomes, uh, for the time of the constraint, the child of it, which means you would have the same result if uh, the object B would be directly underneath object A in the character hierarchy. Now, since there are a couple of options I wanted to show you in the parent-child constraint, this is what I'm going to do first. Um, but before this, I want to create a camera because we need one, obviously. So go to your asset browser, I click on elements and just drop a camera on the scene, uh, switch to it uh, with the Ctrl E shortcut. And then I'm going to uh, start placing it as I uh, want. You know, you can choose wh whichever framing you like. I'm going to create one just to show the purpose of it, which is a traditional uh, third person over the shoulder camera. Uh, what you can do though is to click on center. It will display this light cross here, which will help you uh, find, you know, the like the um, some kind of I don't know uh, line of fire or the directly the the point that you would like to uh, be aiming at. What you can do as well is to switch under picture format, switch to HD, which will switch to you know traditional uh, resolution uh, in that case 1920 by 1080 and then uh, we're going to be able to uh, starting from frame zero create our uh, parent child constraint so do this by right clicking on constraint and then insert uh, constraint and parent child now uh, oh yeah i want to delete the camera interest because i want my camera to be free so select the camera, drop it under the constraint object. So now we need to find a source, which would be the, the parent. Uh, in my opinion, just to, we want to extract the forward motion of our character. So uh, a good object that is conveying uh, the translation of a character would be the hips. So I'm going to be using the hips effector as the source. So select it and I'll drag it onto the first parent, snap the constraint so that it remembers the, the offset, and then you can play. Now, the result you have is um, this, which is not really appealing to the eye, uh, but because it's actually behaving uh, the way it should. Uh, the parent child constraint is uh, extracting uh, all three axes for translation and rotation. Obviously, when you play a game, uh, the camera that is uh, the one you see uh, is not looking at the translation of the hips, uh, sorry, at the rotation of the hips, because that's not something you want. And you don't want either your camera to be following the hips on the left, right, 
uh, axis, so uh, left right side, which would be in that case the X axis. And you don't want the camera to be bouncing along with the, with the hips, which is in our case the Y axis. The only thing you need to have your camera following your character um, forward is the, in my case, because I like to, uh, like I said in my, in one of the video, I have, I like to have my character facing forward, so the positive Z, is to extract the motion on that specific Z axis. Now, there is a way to do this. If you click on your uh, parent shine constraint here in your navigator or your scene browser, under properties, if you develop constraint axis, you have all the axes that are by default checked and enabled for that constraint. Now we said we don't want uh, the rotation at all. And then for the, when it comes to the translation, remember we said that we don't want the X axis, which is the left, right. And we don't want the bouncing up and down. We only need the Z axis. Now, if you play, you would have your camera that would be uh, normally following uh, your character on the Z axis. Now this is the result you want. Now let's say you wanted to have a uh, slightly different framing like this, then you would start seeing um, weird behaviors uh, with the parent chain constraint. That's because the link you've created with that constraint is local, right? It would be the same thing as placing, like I said, the camera underneath the hips effector. What we want to do instead is to apply a source object, in our case the hips effector, to constrain the translation of a target object, which is the camera, globally. And that is the exact definition of the constraint called position. So this is what we're going to use as a second option. So I'm going to get back to the framing I had previously originally created. I'm going to deactivate the parent child constraint. And I'm gonna go back to constraint, insert a position constraint. Now the plus side as well that I forgot to mention is that we do not have to take care of the rotation since this constraint is only taking position or translation into account. Now uh, we want to use the same elements as before. So camera as the constraint object and our hips effector as the source. Now snap it and play. You see, you have something already you feel a little bit different, uh, but remember that uh, we only wanted the, so right, right here you can see that it's, it's quite following, you can see that we're uh, locked onto the hips effector because by default the position is all, also um, enabled all three axes. And same as before, we only want the uh, Z axis. So the same way as before, just click on your position constraint. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the animation play uh, for you to see the difference. Not on position setting, but under constraint axis. Um, disable X and disable the Z axis. See, actually, if uh, you have this, the camera is, I mean, the character looks steady just because we're bouncing along with it. As, as soon as you deactivate uh, Y axis, then you can see the bouncing of your character again, just because the camera is not bouncing anymore. Now, if you look at it from the a perspective, you can see that it's a nice traveling like you would have on a rail in movies. And now the, uh, the cool part is that you can at will change the framing, even if you want something, sorry, if you want something to look different as in, I don't I want to showcase my loop from the side, then it works. You have just a camera following a character. If you want something like over like a top down view, you can as well. This is one of the methods I use myself because it's really easy to set up, right? It's a couple of clicks and you have something right away. Uh, a third option I wanted to show you is to actually create an object that would be and like a buffer object, like an intermediate object. Um, I usually create this object as the projection of the hips on the ground. That would be something you have in, in many games. Uh, studios call this differently. It can be the reference 
reference box, reference helper, um, root helper, root motion uh, for Unreal. An object that would convey uh, the translation of a character but on the ground. Now, I'm gonna create this now using the exact same settings as the camera. So I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna deactivate this as well, because I create a new constraint, which is also gonna be a position constraint. I'm gonna drop a, it doesn't matter if it's a cube, you can use whatever you want. I'm gonna be using a cube, but it could be a null, it could be a marker. I'm gonna use a cube so that it's uh, always visible. And then I'm just gonna make sure it's on the ground and I'm gonna place it pretty much underneath my character's legs. And now using the same um, uh, method as before, I want to uh, constrain that cube to the hips effector, but I want also uh, same thing as before, so the Z position only, which is gonna give me this seed projection of the hips on the ground. And now this object is gonna be my uh, work base if I want to create different extra objects such as the camera, but you could also extract that motion um, in your game engine if you wanted to, for some reason, extract uh, the only the Z translation uh, of your character. And now, since I have this cube, I don't have to worry about uh, the camera and the hips, I can create a parent-child constraint, use the cube as the parent and the camera as the child, uh, snap it, and then play. So right now, you know, I've deactivated my first position constraint, so the camera is only right now affected by the cube, which is the hips projection on the ground, and at will as well, even during the animation, I can move my camera around, just because the con that constraint remembers the local offset I have uh, in between my camera and my cube. Now, I have created a simple Python script to do this exact last step, so creating a cube that is the projection of the hips, and then create a camera that would be parented to it, so that it's following the direct so the cube, the projection of the hips, uh, and then the camera is uh, set with a, a default framing. You were allowed to change it, obviously. The script is available for download on my website, and I gave you the direct link in the description below. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you is to use a front plate on your camera to add something to your uh, rendering. So I'm gonna use Photoshop to create two black stripes on the top and bottom part of the camera, but you can use Paint, you can use GIMP, whichever software you want to. So in Photoshop, I'm just gonna create a new document. Remember to just use the same uh, parameters as your resolution as your camera. In our case, that was uh, HD, full HD, so 1920 by 1080. And make sure the uh, background is set to transparent. I'm just gonna create a rectangle uh, so make sure it's filled with the uh, black and there's no stroke. Yeah, set to no stroke here. Create a rectangle over here. I don't know about the size. Uh, you know, it's like, I don't know how you feel. Something like this. And just I'm gonna uh, duplicate that layer and drag this one at the bottom. Actually, let's make sure both are snap onto, yeah, let's do something like this, right, and then save your file as a PNG, it's important, I'm gonna name it this one, front plate, it's important that it's, in, it's a PNG, and then back in Motion Builder, what you can do is uh, directly drop your uh, PNG directly onto your scene um, and set it to current camera foreground and we'll set it as the front plate so if you go to your camera and front plate here it has actually uh, created a texture which is down here and uh, already set it as the foreground texture so it, it just adds those two black stripes 
uh, which which are also gonna be here when you uh, render if you want to render directly the animation from motion builder they're gonna be here so it adds so, you know get rid of the uh, click on the uh, the camera get rid of the grid for example or set a nice background uh, maybe get rid of the the center and you can start rendering actually there are separate options uh, for um, the viewer and the render options um, but then you would have some like extra dramatic cinematic um, aspect to your videos see it works pretty well right i, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't be able to tell if uh, this animation is rendered from a game engine from motion builder actually i'm just gonna select my cube and hide it so that there's nothing in the way yeah see it's it it's pretty cool right it's pretty simple there you go wasn't this really simple so starting from today you guys don't have any excuse anymore even if you cannot use game engines you have to start using such methods to show your animations gameplay animations in your demo reels now what you could do is to start by showing your animation first from a perspective of your choice you know set a, a camera on the scene maybe animate the camera to give your animation a bit more depth a bit more impact but then afterwards definitely do show your animations from the perspective that would be the one in the game engine in the game remember this is the essence of gameplay animation a running loop such as the one we've been using today would be seen hundreds of hours from behind so if you have to polish the animation and show it and make it really appealing to the eye that would be for from that specific angle thank you very much for watching if you haven't yet please consider subscribing in the meantime, stay safe, have fun, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.